Hey everyone, this is Mike from vSwitchZero.com. Today we're going to take a look at updating NIC drivers using VMware Update Manager. So in the last video that I did, we went through the process of updating drivers from the command line. And that process is good if you've got a very small environment, you just have a few hosts. Uh, maybe you just want to test one as a one-off. Um, but obviously if you've got a very large number of hosts, it's not a very efficient way to go about updating them. So I'm going to show you how to use VMware Update Manager, which can make very quick work of this process. So if you recall from my previous video, I had um, three hosts in the cluster Compute A here, A1, 2, and 3. And they both have, or they all have this solar flare uh, 10 gig adapter here, which is VMNIC 2 and 3. It's a single port card. And I did update uh, ESX A1 via the command line. And I'll just go over to the SSH sessions of these hosts just to show you where they're, where they're at for drivers right now. So ESX A1 has the newer driver, which is 4.10.9.1000. And ESX A2 and A3 still have the older 4.10.4.1000 version of driver. So we're going to create uh, an update manager baseline and, ap and apply it to all three of these hosts and uh, make sure that they're all at the same driver version. So to begin, we'll go over to, actually I'll just show you the file that we downloaded earlier as well <clears throat> in the downloads location of my system here. So this is the solar flare driver that I downloaded from um, the link provided in the VMware compatibility guide. And if you look within this file here, you'll see that there, there's a few different things inside, including some documentation, source code. You've also got um, uh, the VIB, which is the driver itself. And we have this uh, other uh, archive within called the offline bundle. And the offline bundle is what we really need when we're working with Update Manager. And essentially, it's just the, the VIB driver included with some metadata. So if I actually look inside here, we should see um, an XML file with some metadata as well as some vendor information and that sort of thing that goes along with the VIB itself. And you can see the VIB is contained in here. So we don't really need to worry about what's contained within, but this is uh, metadata that'll be parsed by Update Manager that'll give it information about what the driver is, what vendor created it, and that sort of thing. <clears throat> we also use this offline bundle as well when we updated the driver from the command line. When you're doing it from the command line, you have the option of using the offline bundle or you can use the VIB. Both methods work. But for when we're dealing with Update Manager, we need to use the offline bundle. So I've already extracted it and it's uh, sitting right here in the downloads location. So we'll be using that in a moment. So I'm just going to go back over to my vSphere client here. And if I go over to Update Manager, And the vCenter we're working with is vc.vswitch0.net. Okay, so now we're in the Update Manager configuration section here. And we don't need to worry about downloading anything um, in order to get this. These are the, the default download sources that come with Update Manager. And this is how you obtain your ESX patches and that sort of thing. Um, but what we want to do is basically upload a custom patch. So if we go over to the patch rep repository here, you can see that these are all of the patches that were um, obtained from, from the VMware download sources. There's quite a few of them here. Uh, what we're going to do is just click the Import Patches button up here. And you can see it's prompting for a zip file. And this is the offline bundle that we need to provide it. So I'm going to go ahead and browse to that location. And it uploads it automatically here. I believe it's only a few hundred kilobytes, so it really shouldn't take very long. So once it's updated, uh, the extraction of what's within occurs automatically, and, and Update Manager should be able to make sense out of what this is. So you can see here that it was able to read the metadata included with the offline bundle, and you can see that the, we have the release date, short description of what it is, SFC driver for ESX. Uh, we can see that the vendor is Solar Flare, and then there's a patch ID number as well. So go ahead and click Finish here. Okay, so now we should see it in the list here. It's probably all the way at the bottom. Yeah, there it is, SFC driver for ESX. So now we have this as something that we can create, um, something that we can put in a baseline. So if I go over to host baselines here, and you can see there's a couple of predefined ones here. These are just the default critical and non-critical host patch 
uh, baselines. And this is what people will use when they update their ESX hosts to the latest builds. Um, in my case, I'm going to create a new one. And we're just going to call it Solar Flare Driver Update. And for a driver update, the, the baseline type should be host extension. So this is sort of what you would use for additional software that's not part of the core build of ESX. Uh, in this situation, the, the Solar Flare driver is not uh, included by default, so it's considered a host extension. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And these are all of the extensions that were detected. So you can see that none of the ESX host patches showed up here, but we do have the SFC driver that we imported. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one and click Next and then finish. And that's all there is to it. So now we've got a custom host baseline here for the driver update. So that's basically it from the update manager perspective. So I'm going to go back over to the hosts and clusters view now. And the next step is really to apply the update manager baseline to a specific host or hosts. And there's a couple different ways we can do this, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply it to the cluster object as opposed to the hosts because all three of these hosts um, are identical in configuration. So it makes sense to apply it to the cluster and then that's automatically inherited to all three hosts. So I'm going to select compute a and I'm going to go over to the update manager tab here. And you can see that there are no baselines attached to this host right now, so it's really not comparing anything. So I'm going to go ahead and attach a baseline, and we're going to attach the Solar Flare driver update baseline that we just created. And now you can see that the Solar Flare dr driver update baseline is here. It's a host extension, but the compliance status is currently unknown. And the reason it's unknown is because we haven't actually scanned any of the hosts within the cluster to see if they're compliant or not. So if I go over to one of the hosts here, for example, A1, I'll go over to Update Manager, we should see that the baseline automatically applied. Because I applied it at the cluster level, it's now showing up on the host. So I'm going to go ahead and scan for compliance. So if I select the baseline, and I just go up to the top, I believe it's uh, Scan for Updates. And it doesn't matter, I'll just leave both selected there and hit OK. Let me just get my recent tasks pane here, see if, yep, there we go, it is scanning. OK, so that finished. Just unpin that. And we can see now that we have the overall status for the entire cluster is non-compliant. So you can see if I go to the various tabs down here, so we have compliant 1, ESX A1, and non-compliant are 2 and 3. And that makes perfect sense because ESX A1 had already had this driver updated manually in the command line that I did previously. So now we have ESX A2 and 3, which are non-compliant. <clears throat> so at this point, I have a couple of options I can remediate based on the uh, the entire cluster or I can remediate individual hosts either way will work um, the good thing about update manager is is it it does take advantage of DRS so uh, as far as you know evacuating hosts as long as you have it in fully automated mode this update process can go pretty seamlessly if your hosts can all or your virtual machines can all demotion other hosts in the cluster you can really do this without any kind of uh, interruption so I'm going to do it based on the entire cluster. So if I go up to the top now and just click the remediate button, you also have the option to stage as well. So if you wanted to sort of prepare your hosts, you can stage, which uh, sort of begins the, the first part of the update process, um, everything except for the reboot to finish it off. So if you uh, are tight for time and wanted to do this during a limited maintenance window, you could stage the patches. I'm not worried about that though, so I'm just going to go ahead and remediate them immediately. And this should bring up a wizard. So here are, is the baseline, the Solar Flare driver update. So it's already selected. I'm going to hit Next. It's going to ask me for the target objects. So I'm going to go ahead and select 2 and 3, which are the, the ones that still need the, the patch, or the extension, I guess you can call it. Hit Next. And the SFC driver for ESX is selected. Next. 
And I'm not going to schedule this. It's going to happen immediately, so that's fine. Okay, so now we have some maintenance mode options here. Um, this is only if you have uh, virtual machines that may not respond to that type of uh, maintenance mode operation. So I'm just going to leave all of that by default. All of my virtual machines should be able to migrate, so we'll just leave that. And the bottom part is for uh, Pixie booted hosts if you're using auto deploy, which I'm not. So I'm going to skip that piece. And cluster remediation. I don't have DPM turned on, but that's fine. All the all the defaults here should be fine. Again, make sure you read through these depending on what um, cluster based features you're using within vSphere. But in my case, all of these are, are fine. I'm not using fault tolerance or DPM or anything like that. And actually, I don't even have HA turned on right now, so I'm just going to Go ahead and click next. And we are pretty much ready to go. So you can see here that the remediation time is immediately because I didn't schedule it. We're going to do this right away. So I'm going to go ahead and hit finish here. I'll just open up the recent pa uh, tasks pane. And it's going ahead to remediate now. So I'm just going to actually change my view here because I don't know why that layout setting was modified. Reset that to the defaults. There we go. That looks a little better. Okay, so the remediation is, is beginning here. Now you can see that at the bottom there's a whole bunch of uh, vMotion tasks that just started. So um, I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like it did host three first because you can see it went into maintenance mode. And the beauty of this method here is that this is all happening automatically. I don't have to evacuate the host. I don't have to put it in maintenance mode. I don't have to reboot it. Update manager is automating all of those steps, which is which is great. So you can see there's now an install task. So it evacuated the host first. It's now installing the uh, the driver update. And uh, once that's finished, it will automatically reboot the host and it should uh, continue on to the next host after that. And I believe it's smart enough to know exactly how many hosts it can do concurrently. So if you do have a large cluster, um, I've only got three hosts here, so I don't think it's going to do two at once. But uh, based on the resources that are available and uh, how you have HA configured and all of that sort of thing, it will be able to uh, do more than one host simultaneously if, if it can, uh, if there are enough resources to go around. So looks like the install just finished and now it's initiating the host reboot so that's great once uh, ESXA3 is back online after the reboot it will do the exact same thing with uh, host A2 so I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward the video now there's no point in, um, in waiting for this and watching paint dry and I'll be back with you in just a minute okay so host ESXA2 which was the last one has just come back online so let's have a look at the compliance. So as you can see, it actually just came out of maintenance mode automatically. If DRS did need to shuffle VMs around again, it would do that uh, on its own. So nothing needed there. So I'm going to go ahead, go back to the compute a cluster object here. And you can see it's still listing as non-compliant. Um, but if I do another scan, It should update now that the hosts are back online and we should see that it's green. So we'll give that a second. And just while we're waiting for that, I'm going to go back to the command line here. <clears throat> I did log into two and three already. And you can see that actually two, I have to log in again, but three after it rebooted did get the new 4.10.9.1000 driver. And I'll just log into two again. ESX CLI network nick get dash n vm nick 2. And you can see here that it's now the new driver. So all three do match now, which is great. Let's see if that finished. And it did. So now we have a green check mark here for compliance. So all three of these hosts are now at the same driver version. So as far as this baseline is concerned, the, host, the hosts are all compliant. 
So I hope that was helpful. It's certainly a much, much better process to use um, if you have a large environment. If you've got hundreds of hosts, uh, Update Manager can make very quick work of this process. Um, that's it for today. I hope you liked this video. Please subscribe if uh, you'd like to see more content like this. And I uh, hope everyone has a great day. Thanks.